I came to Kentucky to study black bears and black bears were coming into Harlan County. So I had spent a summer studying black bears and kept finding stray dogs. Um, I decided to go by the shelter just because I thought I'd see what it was like. And I came in and the first thing I saw was a Shih Tzu. And I thought, this is a dog that people would be fighting over if she were anywhere else. And I asked them, you know, well, do you think she's going to get adopted? And they kind of just looked at me like, you what? And I thought, OK, well, I can find this dog at home. I can help this dog. And I found her a home, and I came back. And I thought, well, I'll take another dog. And just looking at it as like a life, OK, how many lives can I get out of here? Because everything I didn't take died. There was so much tragedy. We had no medical stuff. I would bring down what I could, and you know, um, but it was never enough. There was no way to garner the kind of support and resources to, to take that next step and actually get beyond survival and into building some infrastructure and some things that would solve problems long term. I think during this time, like I didn't cry a lot. I just kind of couldn't. There wasn't enough energy left to do that. I just had to keep going. It was hard because there was always that balancing act of needing for people to know just how dire this is and how bad this is. But at the same time, if you were too honest, you would sometimes get this huge backlash. Why aren't the staff doing more? And why aren't you doing more? And why isn't somebody doing something? And it's like, well, I am somebody and I'm trying to do something. And the problem is too big for this number of somebodies to do something. <laughs> This is a war, and I feel like I'm one soldier on the battlefield. I got an email from somebody who said, you know, I want to drive down and, and try and, and help out. And, and she came down, and she got some. And that was the start of climbing out of hell. So that was Lynn, and <laughs> that was the beginning of Safe Hands. When Lynn and I met, she went very quickly from being a receiving rescue to actually helping with building the infrastructure that we needed at the shelter and, and sending in the medications and sending in the vaccines and really taking an interest in helping us build the system that would be able to get more animals out. To have help that was real help, that was on the ground help, like I had not had that before. Somebody who was willing to come here and see what I was seeing and to get help and to network. Safe Hands set up coordinating with a, a spay neuter group, which was addressing the problem in a more systemic way. Um, that, that helped to start reducing the number of animals coming in a lot. And I'm really staggered today because when I used to come down here, there would be 12 animals, you know, in the big kennels. There would be four and five dogs in the small kennels. Um, and that has changed. There's one dog in the kennel and there's empty kennels in there, which I don't think I've ever seen before. When the animals come in, they are um, given a vaccine, they're given a dewormer, they are given an identity, some of them for the first time in their lives. Um, they get, you know, a number and a name and they exist in a, you know, a trackable way. Um, and then that information helps them to get out. So that is an enormous difference. It is heartbreaking the ones who just couldn't make it between transports. They came in, they maybe they were okay, but you know, then they got sick or there were a lot of animals that that didn't make it out that maybe could have made it out if they'd had a safe place to land in the interim. I've experienced just so many complicated emotions coming here today. I think for me, so many of these kennels are haunted. The shelter is haunted by all of the animals that we were not able to get out and that could have been saved. They were nice animals. They would have been wonderful, beloved pets if they could have gone somewhere. You're kind of alone here in the mountains. Um, you know, you feel so isolated. But before Safe Hands, most of our animals never left this place. They come here to die. We had nowhere to put them. We had nowhere to send them. The first year I worked here, almost every single puppy we had would either die of parvo or be euthanized because of parvo.
that Safan said, there's something wrong. It's not right. Let's fix it. Let me teach you. It's not just about the medicine. It's not just about what they do for us. It's about what they do for, for our animals in our community. A large part of the problem in southeastern Kentucky is that this used to be a mining community that was the economic infrastructure here. And so without mining, the communities don't have the money to fund human services, much less animal services. And this is why Safe Hands needs to be here. Our dream is to have a rescue center in Kentucky. This center would support small rural shelters, stray animals, and the community. Having boots on the ground would allow us to provide immediate assistance where it is needed most. We would be able to take the most vulnerable animals in desperate situations and be their bridge to a better life. In addition, we have plans to partner with a low-cost bay neuter clinic to bring this service to an area where it is greatly needed. She's falling asleep right now because she doesn't want to lay down and go to sleep. That's the problem. So, to be careful, you pick her up. I mean, yes, but you pick her up, those other dogs may have a problem. No, 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 no. no. a huge problem in this area. There are a lot of people who don't understand that they need to spay and neuter their dogs and cats here. They feel like we live in a rural area so they can run free and it doesn't matter how many of them there are. One dog or cat multiplies into 20 or 30. We treat dozens a week for parvovirus and illnesses. We were seeing so many cases here where people couldn't afford to take care of their pets. They were abandoning them. Our shelters are tremendously underfunded, underworked. The dream for us at the Floyd Shelter is to have an establishment like Safe Hands in Kentucky. We could do so much better if, if Safe Hands was here with us. It would be faster to get um, animals the care that we needed. There would be a place where we could take these animals when we get overcrowded. Having an organization that cares like Safe Hands does in Kentucky, 
It would be a miracle to us here who are sometimes left in the dark and alone. Love doesn't save animals. It takes a lot more than that. You have to love animals, but it takes money. It takes resources. Safe Hands took what I was doing and they made it so much more and so much bigger and so much better. Safe Hands saved Harlan and they saved me. What I experienced with them coming here and the difference that makes to, to be here and be able to do things here makes an enormous difference. And so the idea that we might someday in Eastern Kentucky have a facility that could be a way station for them on their journey to a home would make such a difference. It would be the next step. I think that the Safe Hands family is an extraordinary group of people. I think one of the things that makes our organization unique is we're looking for the underdog. We are looking for the kids that won't get any help if it isn't for our organization. So for many of these dogs, they have never been wanted before in their life. And the second I send that picture out, I know that our family loves them and wants them. Um, our team is so dedicated, so hardworking. We take the impossible and we make it possible. If Safe Hands could come in here and build a center where they could take care of these animals, do low cost spays and neuters, it would make a tremendous difference in this area, not just in our county, but in all the surrounding Eastern Kentucky counties. So they've saved uh, thousands from being euthanized. in Minneapolis. Our volunteers are very dedicated people. They have big hearts. They're amazing people. We are so excited to welcome our team home and to take 88 dogs and puppies into safe hands. From this moment on, they have our whole family behind them. When I saw the vans pulling in and I saw these crowds of people and seeing them, all of these people there, and all of these people there just giving of their time and their energy and showing up, uh, it is amazing to me that people so far away, you know, can care so much and can make such a difference.
Mackenzie, Koa, and Elliot are loved and cherished now. This is what we want for all dogs. With your help, we can provide this to so many more. This is what your gift makes possible.